Here we're going to see three ways to customize HTTP client. You can add message processing handlers into HTTP client and they get to inspect both the request and the response as they flow through the system. You can also drop down and influence the networking and there's two levels here. You can just change how the default networking works or you can completely replace it either with your own code or with code you get from a third party. In both cases, these things are called handlers. Probably one of the, one of the best words to uh, describe what they are would be filter because they live inside HTTP client and they see the messages passing both directions as they flow through HTTP client. There's a sequence of handlers and the messages flow through them in order. In the outbound direction, they flow that way. And when the response comes back, it's the inverse order. All of these things here are classes that inherit from HTTP message handler. And there's two sides to the inheritance hierarchy. Delegating handler serves as the base class for the message processors. So if you want to install a custom message processor, you inherit from delegating handler and then your class is eligible to live in this uh, handler pipeline. On the other side, there's HTTP client handler. And this is a little bit uh, more involved. So that class right there has two roles. It does implement the default networking for HTTP client. So if you just wanna do light customization, you can create one of those objects, set a bunch of properties on it, and then install that as your networking layer inside HTTP client. If that sort of light modification isn't enough for you, you can get a derived class of HTTP client that completely re-implements the network layer. You might do that yourself if you're ambitious or more likely you're gonna acquire one from some third party or from a library. By default, there's no message processing nodes in the pipeline, but there is one of those. There's an instance of HTTP client handler that's created automatically for you. And it's the thing that actually sends the message and receives the response. If you take control of the pipeline, if you start adding in message processing nodes, then you no longer get that HTTP client handler for free. And, and this is important. If you're gonna install a custom message processor, that means you also are responsible for instantiating and installing the, the networking layer that you prefer. Even if it's just the default HTTP client handler, you still have to manually create and install it. Here's our first task. We wanna install one of these message processing handlers. So we're working over there on that side of the hierarchy with delegating handler. Delegating handler is the thing that implements the chaining of the elements of the pipeline. So it remembers the sequence and makes sure that the messages flow through the pipeline. You're gonna write a class here that inherits from delegating handler. You need to override the send async method and you should also provide two constructors. So we'll see how to do all three of these things here. So you write a class that inherits from delegating handler you override send async. Here's the key of the actual work that you need to do to integrate into the pipeline. You need to call your base class version of send async. So that's calling up to delegating handler. That will send the request along to the next node in the pipeline. Eventually the request will reach the networking piece of the pipeline. It will be sent out across the network. The response will come back the response will work its way in the reverse direction through the pipeline, the pieces that are downstream of you. Eventually this await will finish here and you'll get back a response, which you then return as your result. So notice these two blank areas here. There's some code that you can put here and there's some code that you can put here. Anything you put before the call to send async, that executes during the outbound request. Anything that you put after the call to send async executes after the request has gone out to the server, come back, round tripped all the way back to you, up through the pipeline and, and back to you here. So this example is really simple. So we just have print statements in here, but you can do whatever you want to, to the request here, including modification, do whatever you need to do to the response here, again, including modification. There's two other pieces of code that you should write, and this is a very strong convention, so it's a pretty good idea to do it. You should add two constructors. The first one is for clients to use when they install your handler, but it's not at the end of the message processing pipeline. So notice there's another message processing handler here before you reach the networking node. So the, the constructor that you wanna do for this one looks like that. It takes the next handler in the pipeline as its parameter, and just passes that up to delegating handler because delegating handler is the thing that basically remembers the sequence of handlers in the pipeline. 
The other constructor you should do is a default constructor, and this one gets used here when your handler is the last message processing node in the pipeline. Notice there's no other message processing nodes here before the networking piece. So in this case, you should have a default constructor that looks like that, creates the networking node, and there's a call to you know, colon this, which then of course calls colon base. So that gets passed up to delegating handler. Once you have a pipeline created, here's how you install it in HTTP client. There's just a constructor that will take the first handler in that chain. Remember, they're all sort of chained together because they all inherit from delegating handler, and delegating handler's job is to keep the inner handler for each element in the chain. Let's look at how to do that in code. We'll do the same example two ways. The first time we'll do it the verbose way, and the second time we'll take advantage of that default constructor to simplify the code just a little bit. So we're going to construct these in reverse order. Notice how each new thing we construct takes the previous one as its parameter. This right here, validation, that's the first element in the pipeline, and that's the thing we're going to pass to the HTTP client constructor. There's a simpler way to do this. We can take advantage of the default constructor that we wrote here for trace handler. That thing creates the HTTP client handler automatically for us, which means we can save a line of code here. Next task is just to configure HTTP client handler, the thing that implements the default networking. So we're going to use that type directly. We create an instance of HTTP client handler, and we set some properties, and then we install the client handler into the HTTP client. So this is pretty straightforward. The, the motivation here is sort of interesting. HTTP client doesn't implement networking itself. It delegates to a handler. That kind of explains why these kind of properties, the properties that impact the networking, those don't exist on HTTP client itself. They're over here on the handler because that's the thing that actually does the work. And our final task is installing our own networking implementation. We're not actually going to implement one from scratch. We're just going to use a few that are supplied by Xamarin. For motivation, I'll just mention that HTTP Client Handler is a managed implementation of networking. Behind the scenes, it uses HTTP web requests, which means it's not taking advantage of any platform-specific networking APIs. And it could be that you could write a more efficient implementation if you did that. For example, if you were working on iOS, if your implementation used something like NSURL session. Xamarin's already done that work for you. There are three handlers that are just supplied. There's two for iOS and one for Android. CF Network Handler, NSURL Session Handler, and Android Client Handler. So these all have some pros and cons. I'm not going to read all the details to you. The, the main point is these all use the underlying lower level networking stacks, which typically means they're going to be a little bit more performant than HTTP Client Handler. On iOS, you could write code like that. Just create your preferred network handler and install it into HTTP client. The Android version would look like that. That code looks pretty simple. There's one problem though. The handler types like CF network handler, those aren't available in, in code that you have in a PCL. They're only available in the native project. So for example, the, the first two there are only available inside a Xamarin iOS project. And, and many people, if you're doing something like Xamarin Forms, you want to move as much of your code as you can into your shared code, and into your PCL. So to enable that, Xamarin did something kind of interesting. In the build settings on iOS, you can specify which handler HTTP client should use by default. For Android, it's not quite as integrated. You have to set an environment variable here to the fully qualified class name of the handler you'd prefer to use. And then instead of doing that, you just do that. And you can do that in your PCL. And behind the scenes, the, the infrastructure takes care of locating and installing the correct handler that you've specified in your configuration.